is the 25th of July, 2007, and we're talking to uh, descendants of the families that lived in Cape Canaveral in our uh, place called Otasia. And uh, today we have this gentleman uh, with us uh, to tell his story. Uh, what is your name, please? Uh, my na name is Charles Terran. I was born in 1939 on the Cape. I uh, lived here until 1950 when they moved everybody away. Okay, and what is your mother and father's name? My mother's name was Aline uh, Mask before she was married. Mask? Mask. Okay. And my father is Charlie Terran. Okay. And uh, uh, did you have any brothers and sisters? I had three sisters, one a year older than me, and... Uh, uh, one three years younger and four years younger than me. Okay. And uh, who, uh, did they marry people in the same vicinity that lived out here at the Cape? No, we didn't uh, grow up until we moved out to the uh, city of Cape Canal now. Okay. Uh, what year were you born? 1939. Okay. And um, as I understand, uh, it was a very different life out here at, back then. And what was the name of the little town here? It was called Artesia. Uh, all I knew, knew was uh, Canaveral. Okay. But Artesia was a little further uh, south. Okay. Uh, uh, because uh, people get the boundaries of what was... Uh, Can Canaveral and what was named Artesia <coughs> mixed up, and I don't think there was any real division line there, was there? I didn't know of any. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I, I thought it was just uh, where the old post office used to be, where that Artesia st uh, started. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> And um, most of the people that lived out here during the time that you lived out here, uh, what uh, type of, uh, of uh, work did they do? What were their vocations? Uh, we had the people that worked down the fishing, uh, the pier for fishing, and uh, my grandfather did that. And who and was your grandfather? Robert Mask. Okay. And... Uh, my father was a berry farmer, uh, palmetto berries, and uh, that's what he did for a living. Okay. And where were where? Were, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, what? Uh, where were where were the palmetto berry business? Did, did it have a name? Or no, not that I know of. Okay, it was just like a processing. Uh, talk, uh, tell me what they did with the palmetto berries. They they gathered them and then what happened to them? Uh, my father built uh, trays. Uh, I guess about about four foot off the ground, three three or four foot, and they uh, got the berries and they put them on the trays and they dried them out, and then we called them at, when they got dried out. Uh, we sent samples to different companies, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and uh, they put their orders in, and we'd start. We'd take all the berries, and we in a certain place, and we would uh, cull them out, take the old, the bad berries out, and put them in the sacks. Now, were, they, were these berries that we're talking about? They came off of the palmetto bushes. Yes. And they, the little green nut-looking things, were they? Or? Uh, they were green, then they uh, turned kind of an orange color, then they turned black when they're ripe. When they're ripe. Yeah. And that's what they did when they were in these drying bins? They yeah. were dried by the sun? Yes. Okay. And then they were taken out of the drying racks and taken to a process plant or something? Oh, well, we processed them ourselves. We, I mean, we called them out and put them in sacks and uh, took them to the railroad yard in uh, Cocoa. Okay, and then they were shipped to different manufacturers. Now, yeah. what, 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 did, what did they use this palmetto berries for? They said uh, for medicine, making medicines. Okay, and, and I understand today it's still used. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. How long, how long uh, was your dad in the palmetto berry business? Uh, I remember uh, 
all my life. When I was born, I can remember that, and he, he died in 1949. He was still in the business. Still in the business. My uh, uh, cousins from Widdens, Woodrow Widden, they'd, uh, when he was sick, they would uh, pick the palmetto berries and uh, we would uh, put them out in the trays and everything. He took care of, care of us for a while before we got moved off the Cape. Mm -hmm. So what happened to that in industry? How come it just dissipated? Do you know? No, I don't. Uh, there, was, uh, there was another man that uh, had was in the business at that time, is um, Robert Burns. And there's two of them competitors. <laughs> Uh, where where was your dad's operation located out here? Uh, approximately where was it? It was on the, uh, the uh, get the name of the road that goes by the river, goes by the hangars. I, I don't know what that road the is. Industry road. That, that was a regular road that goes uh, from the south gate all the way down to the. Uh, and it was okay. And it was on that road. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, how about uh, and and they truck uh, when they uh, put them in burlap bags? Is that what they did? In like in burlap bags and then yes. trucked them over to Coco. Yeah, we, uh, we took them over to Coco. Okay. Uh, was there a season for palmetto berries? Uh, th was that seasonal or was yes, it? Yes. Uh, uh, they get ripe around September, October. In the fall. Yeah. In the fall. Okay. Thank heavens it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> and how were the how were these picked by hand? Uh, yeah, we had clippers. Uh, that they'd be on a long bush, and uh, we'd have had hampers, and they'd clip the uh, bush off, and then we'd take them and shake them in the hampers till they got full. And that was really heavy carrying them things around. I can <laughs> to, imagine. You know, we had to carry them back to the uh, back to the car or. The trailer where we had. Now, uh, from the time that they were picked, say September, October, or something like that, the time they were picked to the time they were dried and shipped, well, how long did that usually take? I would think until the end of spring, probably. That long? That's yeah, quite a fall long time. To spring, and sometimes a little bit in the summer. Yeah, that was quite a long time. Yeah. So, so uh, then, uh, then the summer nothing went on, and then uh, was anything done uh, at the uh, at the uh, processing area during the summertime at all? Like, for instance, redoing the the racks or anything like that. My father took care of it. He was a carpenter. He built both the, our house and my grandmother's house, which was a store. Okay. Uh, so that's what they did in the summertime uh, when the, they weren't doing the palmetto berries. And uh, I said during the summer they'd uh, go down to the pier and they'd head shrimp for money, you know. Okay. To... So that was a that was the other season. You you mentioned that your um, that your dad built a, a house out here, uh, and where was that house located? That was where. Um, Berry business was. <laughs> oh, okay, right by the berry business. Yeah. Okay, uh, were the racks, for instance, like in your backyard or on uh, the side it, yard, or it was to the north of us. To the north of you. And it, uh, we had 25 acres. Oh. We only had about five acres cleared. Of oceanfront property. No, Almost. It's, uh, it was close to the river. <laughs> close to the river. Yeah. Uh, uh, wow, that's. Uh, I wish you still had that today, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, this is a uh, photograph of uh, your your mother and two children. Is this yeah. a, a yes. sitting? Okay. Who are the two children? I think it's my sister and my uh, cousin, which was a Tucker. Okay. And this was on the side of the house out yes. here that your father had built, with the two little children and your mother. Okay. And uh, it looks like a fine house too. And uh, and uh, this is the other portion of the house. That's the front of the house. And this is the front of the house. And who are these two little children? It's my sister Murdis and myself. And this looks like you might be maybe three years old or so. 
two or three. Two or three, yeah. And that's a fine house. Uh, it has concrete steps and lattice work and uh, nice big windows. And I, I see that uh, it's a typical Florida um, up on uh, piers. And there's a reason for yeah, that, yeah, isn't so. there? Uh, why do they put houses on piers in Florida? Open cement blocks. We had. Concrete blocks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was to, to keep the fleas out and also to uh, have the wind circulate around them, uh, water rising, yeah. uh, that type of thing. So it was a wise set. Uh, you also had uh, in your backyard uh, some goats. And uh, this is a photograph of uh, the goats with the goat shed. And what did you do? What did, why did you have goats? Um. We used uh, the milk, we used to milk them, and we'd drink the goat milk sometimes <laughs> when we didn't get the uh, milk from uh, cocoa. Mm -hmm. And uh, did, did you also have other farm animals? I think my mother said something about a cow, but uh, I don't remember the cow, but that's before I could remember. Okay. Uh, how about chickens? Did you have chickens? Oh yeah, we had chickens all the time. We used to uh, raise chickens and we'd use, uh, had to kill the chickens and I hated to do that. My mother had to get somebody to hold them. My sister would always hold them. <laughs> I'd run down to the road when they did that. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, I bet that uh, you had chicken, a uh, chicken dinner on Sundays. Um, Sundays or any other day. <laughs> Lots of chicken. Huh? Yeah. Did you eat a lot of fish also? Not too much fish. Not too much fish. No. Oh. Uh, this is a photograph of, uh, of uh, you. Uh, and uh, what are you doing there? What is that? Uh, that looks like a hamper that we used to pick the berries in. And, oh. and it was in front of the chicken yard. It was in the backyard. So it's sort of like a, a large rimmed basket, yeah. heavy duty type. Yeah, it's small at the bottom and large at the top. And it has metal rings around it. And uh, I bet that was heavy uh, to carry. Yeah, and to empty. especially when you had to pull the berries. Yeah, and then uh, the, uh, you would empty the berries uh, onto the trays. Is that where it went from this basket onto the trays for drying? Oh, well, usually they had boxes on the truck or trailer. We'd oh, empty them okay. in the boxes okay. and then we'd carry them to the trays and then empty them in the trays. Uh, that would sound like that was labor intensified work and hard work. Well, I didn't do in too much of that work then, but I, I picked uh, berries later for somebody and it, it was hard work. I don't know how my father <laughs> uh, did it. Uh, and especially, uh, yeah, you're right, and thank heavens uh, harvest time was in the winter time when yeah. it was much cooler. Um, you mentioned that the Terrans had a, uh, a store. Uh, this is a photograph of, of the store, and where was that located? That was, that was located just at the, at the start of uh, Pier Road. Okay, and uh, did uh, did people live in the back of the store and just the little bump out in the front was the where? Yes, the, that's the way. It and was. what was carried in the store? Uh, Coca Cola's mostly the drinks and uh, they had uh, peanut butter crackers and candy. Snacks. Snacks. Type thing. And who would who would stop at the store? People going to the pier. People going to the pier, and when the army moved out here before they took over. The, a lot of the army personnel stopped there, and we had a gas pump there. Okay. Uh, sold gas. And uh, I can see uh, uh, crates of Coca Cola uh, sitting outside. Uh, did you have a, a way to ice them to get them cold? Uh, I don't remember. I think it must have been the uh, gas refrigerator they had at that okay. time. And these I probably are the empties that were returned mm -hmm. uh, af afterward. Uh, who is in this photograph? There are three women. I think it was my aunt, my grandmother, and I think it was a friend from Chicago who used to come down and visit us. Uh, Hazel Erickson, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't see the picture. 
uh, right there. And uh, yeah, and it looks like there's a strong wind blowing because their dresses are blowing. Yes, and uh, uh, probably coming uh, coming from the ocean. Uh, it, uh, at this time, this is about what 1940s. Yeah, in the 1950s, 40s. 1950, something like that. 1940s. 1940s. Okay, and um, and uh, you had a, a photograph standing in front of the store of um, of uh, your relatives. Uh, who who were this? This is a wonderful family photograph in front of the store and it looks like everyone's just about here. Uh, starting with the lady in the checkered dress. Uh, who, who were these people? That was my mother, uh, Allie, and that was her, her father beside, him, beside her. Okay. Uh, Robert Mask. And that was me in front of him. And that, Hazel Erickson was next to my grandfather, and that was uh, my little sister hiding behind my. I see her peeking other out. Sister. And that was my aunt Lottie. That was George Erickson, going to your left at the back, and that was my grandmother in front of him. And that was, I think, it was Fred Shack. That was, uh, he was a brother-in-law to Hazel Erickson. And that, my older sister was right in front there, and uh, all the way to the right was Woodrow Whitten, I think. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's a wonderful photograph of everyone standing in front of the store, and uh, has, uh, has a lot of the family, plus some uh, of the other photo uh, people who lived in the area. Yes. Great photo. Um, what uh, what was it like living out here as a, as a youngster? T t tell me about that. What did you do? Well, we uh, I had three sisters, and we we played uh, different things uh, that uh, uh, some trees to climb. We uh, had goats we played with. I used to butt head with the goats. Oh my! <laughs> How did the goats survive? <laughs> I don't know. But they were pretty gentle. They they would they would come up to you and they, they would push you and they wouldn't try to butt you. <laughs> uh, did you work at the store when you were younger? No, I, I when I was living out here I was too young to work. <laughs> oh, okay. You were just a, a a young boy. Yeah, I moved out of here there when I was eleven. Oh, so you you were very young then. Yeah. Okay. What do what do you remember about life out here? Uh, and uh, uh, about uh, going to the pier? Do you remember going to the pier? Yes. Uh, when Hazel and George Erickson used to come down from Chicago, they'd take us out to the pier, and we'd go swimming out at the pier. Yeah. Did the uh, how about the lighthouse? Do you remember visiting anyone at the lighthouse? Not very often. I used to go by there on the school bus all the time. Okay. Now, you didn't go to school here in Cape Canaveral? No, I didn't. Okay, you went to where? I uh, went to Coco. Okay. And who were your school teachers? Do you remember any of their names? I remember my first grade teachers, Mrs. Waller, the second grade teacher, Mrs. Haney, okay. Mrs. Waller, and the next. Mrs. Jackson. <laughs> I who, can't remember their names, but I think about it, take long enough to think about it. Okay. Uh, who was the bus driver? Mostly it was, uh, at first it was Dixie and Ben Lewis. They'd pick up everybody in Cape Canaveral and they'd drive them over to Coco. They'd pick up people at uh, with South, uh, North, South Banana River Drive, which was where uh, Roy, uh, Jerry Worley lived. So. Okay. Um, when um, uh, when you lived out here, um, what were some of the uh, uh, what were some of the activities that you did on the on the weekends? Do you remember? Uh, uh, like, uh, did you have a lot of company come from the mainland to go fishing, or uh, did did you go on picnics for special holidays like the Fourth of July, or what did what did you do for entertainment as a as a young boy? What did you do for entertainment? Um, not too much. We were lived quite a ways from uh, anybody where we lived, and we just uh, I had three sisters and we played together, and that's a 
about all we did. <laughs> okay. Uh, d uh, d did you, uh, uh, do you remember your dad um, uh, uh, working at the Palmetto, in the Palmettos, uh, how long of a day did he usually have in season? Was that like from dusk to dawn? Or, yes, uh, it was. And, and it was very hard work. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how about your granddad? Uh, did he work that also? Not much of that, no. What did he do for a living? He worked out at the, uh, the pier, mostly fishing, and uh, I think he might have worked at the hotel some. Okay. Do you remember what the hotel looked like? Just barely. Okay. Uh, I remember going inside it once or twice. Okay. Was it big? It was big <laughs> at that time for me, you know. I was young. Okay. Uh, uh, did a lot of people who lived out here, did they have their own boats? Do you remember? No, I can't remember. Okay. Uh, did, did your family own an automobile? Yes, we owned uh, a 37 uh, Chevrolet. Oh. Yeah, okay, we, we could drive to Coco. I think they built the causeway from uh, Banana Riverside to uh, Merritt Island about 1942. I just barely remember that. My mother said well, they used to go down the Minuteman Causeway in Cocoa Beach and go over the wooden bridge. And that was a long way around. <laughs> yeah, but I don't remember that bridge. <laughs> I don't remember it. Um, did uh, that at, at, at the store? Um, uh, how did they get the supplies uh, from the store? Did they have people come bring it in over here? It was such a remote area to, uh, to come to. Uh, to uh, was, were you the only store here? Well, the uh, Widden store was uh, about a mile up to where, uh, east of where we live, closer to the pier. The Widden store was? Yeah. Closer yeah. to the pier? Yeah. Okay. It's about halfway up on the road. Okay. And what did they, uh, do you remember what the wooden store used to have at that? They used there? to have just about everything. I remember uh, old the canned goods and stuff like that. Okay. So they had more. Yours was more like a snack bar, soda pop, and that type of thing yes. where they had uh, the staples like canned goods and probably bread and milk or something yeah. like that. Okay. Um, what was uh, Tolly Widden's garden? Do you remember anything about that? I don't remember that? Anything, anything about that. I, all I remember is a kind of savannah right to the uh, west of his store. Mm -hmm. uh, Benji Lewis, he, uh, he had a horse, and he uh, put that horse out in that savannah, and he'd run up and down that savannah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, that, so, so, uh, 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 that and that was right next to to the Widden's garden. To the, I don't know where the garden. Oh, was. oh, the, uh, it was the next, next to the Widden store. store. Next yeah. to the Widden store. Yeah, okay. they had just a hedge in between them. Okay. Uh, wh who are some of the other people that you remember uh, that lived out here? I remember the Mrs. McCoskey. Remember the, where the Quartermans lived. I don't remember too much about him. Remember the Pretorius's. Uh, remember the Boggs and uh, Mr. Burns uh, lived about about a mile south of where we lived on the same road. Okay, what was his first name? Robert. Robert Burns. Do you remember him being uh, 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 doing anything with switchgrass brooms or anything? I heard a little bit about it, but the, the, but I think they they must have cut the grass out here and took it somewhere else to be uh, put together or whatever. Okay, because I I, re I remember reading something about, uh, and I think you're right. I think what he did, he harvested the grass for the broom maker in Titusville, yeah. uh, I believe. Yeah. And uh, and uh, what was so great about it is uh, that uh, he he would cut it, and another ninety days it was up again. So he had a, a full supply of it all the time. So mm -hmm. uh, he made quite a living out of that, and that's called cr scrubland industries, uh, which everybody during the thirties had to do what they had to do. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, what, do, what do you remember out here uh, about uh, the beekeeping? Well, I remember Woodrow, my cousin, Woodrow Whedon. He had some uh, beehives and he always kept in front of our, uh, in front of the old Whedon house, which was right next door to us, right near the road. And uh, he had uh, beehives all over the Cape. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, in this photograph, uh, this was uh, 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 the, the kids that were taking a wonderful little photograph uh, with, uh, with the old car. And uh, in the background, you can see Mr. Wooden's beehives. Yes. And um, uh, one of the things uh, that there were a lot of different kinds of, of uh, honey. And uh, do, do you suppose that the, what he was collecting in these, uh, uh, as I understand, uh, the, uh, the, uh, his royal jelly that he used uh, was used a lot for medicinal purposes. Uh, yes. And what, uh, tell me something, do you know something about that at all? Um, not too much, no. I okay. For, uh, I, I understand that it was used for like arthritis, but it was also used for a beauty, uh, you know, uh, a beauty, uh, moisturizing beauty type of, of thing also. And um, that it was very popular during the 40s and 50s in this area. Yeah. And uh, I was often wondered whether uh, the honey was gotten from the palmetto berries from the palmetto blossoms. Yeah, but they had the uh, hives out here at the Cape mostly to get the palmetto. When the palmetto bush was in blossom, that's where the bees got the pollen from there. And, and he, his business was in Titusville. And he, he had his bees out in the orange grove for the orange blossom honey, you know. So, so there is a possibility that poss uh, that the uh, some of that honey for medicinal purposes, uh, for the arthritis, etc., would have come from the palmetto blossom, and not yes. the orange blossom. Well, I don't think it came from the uh, from the honey itself. I think it came from the queen bee itself. From the queen bee itself, yes. Yeah. Yes. No okay. matter what they were harvesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know. As you can see, I don't know too much about that. Uh, what do you remember uh, about some of the families that were out here, um, and uh, and so, who went who went on the school bus with you to to school in Coco? What were some of the 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 children that attended school with you in Coco? Well, some. We, uh, people we picked up from the lighthouse, the children from the lighthouse keepers, and it was different different ones at different times. We had, they didn't all stay here, you know. They, different people came, and uh, they picked up the W. A. Tucker, which lived. They lived on the same road about uh, quarter quarter and a half a mile up north of me, and the Scots lived next to them. And they had a daughter named uh, Patty, Patty Scott. And uh, the three boys, the W had uh, Melvin, Kelvin, and Vernon. They rode the bus. And uh, there weren't too many people, about uh, less than half a dozen out here at that time that got on the bus from Cape Canaveral. So actually, there were quite a few children, though, uh, it sounds like. Yeah, about, uh, I remember about six people. About six, six children? Yeah. Hmm. So that came from this area. Um, what do you remember uh, uh, about the mosquitoes out here when you were little? How did, you, how did you take care of them from not getting in the house? We had uh, all screens <laughs> <laughs> on our windows and everything. And uh, we always had screen doors. And uh, uh, how about how about during bad weather? How how was that? Uh, like for instance, if you had a hurricane. Well, we just uh, close all the doors and windows. <laughs> okay. And uh, I remember they had a lot of rain. A lot right. of rain. Yeah. Okay. Did you ever have flooding? We lived up on a hill, so we had flooding in the back of our house. 
Okay. We used to go down and play in the puddles <laughs> <laughs> after the hurricanes, okay. and after rainstorms. Okay. Uh, what uh, if you wanted to leave something about your family uh, uh, and living at uh, at uh, Canaveral? What what would you say was most one of your most wonderful memories about living out here? Uh, probably be uh, it wasn't too crowded we could uh, do anything just about what we wanted and uh, had some drawbacks we had to go a long ways to play play with other children and something but I had sisters of my own there so so I can remember about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything about your family that you, that you would uh, like to to let, let people know? Yeah, I, I, I don't remember what year my father came here, but uh, he said he used to used to call square dances. He used to dance a jig out here or something for entertainment. He oh. used to sing. Wonderful. And. Uh, my grandfather and my mother, Robert Mass, they moved down from Covington, Georgia. And I, she said she, my mother said she's about 12 years old, so it had been about 1933. And they lived in a, what, uh, a place behind where we lived, where we lived before. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. So, so they came during the depression then. Uh, I guess thirties. The yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the Normals had a homestead behind where we had the homestead. They they lived there before my father married my mother. Okay, okay. And then you all left when the Cape uh, took over, right? Yes. When the Air Force took over, and uh, you moved to Coco. Uh, we moved to uh, the city of Cape Canaveral. The, the old, uh, my grandmother's store is still there. Where, where, where is it located? On 313 East Madison Avenue. Okay, and, and is it a private resident now? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, and uh, can you uh, uh, still uh, see uh, 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 what it used to look like? Yes, it Does uh -huh. it look basically what it used to look like? Yes, it does. Wonderful, and um, uh, and uh, that was moved uh, when the Air Force came in in the 1940s. 1950. It was 1950. Moved. It was moved, so it's been uh, recycled and used as a house. Yes. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Well, we'll have to go check that out. Well, is there anything else that you can think that you would like to say today? I can't think of anything right now. Okay. Well, we do certainly thank you for coming and participating in our uh, uh, oral history program, and I'm looking forward to talking with you again. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, we're in uh, Cape Canaveral, and this is uh, Charles Terran uh, at the uh, location of the uh, store and house that was moved from uh, Canaveral in 1950. Um, uh, Charles, would you like to describe the house uh, to us? Yes, this is uh, my grandmother's store, and at uh, the front part of the house used to be the store. The small part was there, and it went all the way to the ground. The rest of the house is up. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, how many? Now the store uh, was in the front, um, and uh, what did what did they sell at the store? They sell sold coke, crackers, and candy. They had ga uh, gas pump. They had kerosene. So uh, all the necessities uh, uh, and uh, snacks. Uh, Yes. I uh, sold snacks like uh, Cokes and that type of thing. Cokes, crackers, you know, peanut butter crackers, they still got them today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, who were most of your customers? 
uh, at first I guess it was a, just everybody that lived up there and the fishermen that went down to the pier stopped by and when they started taking over the Cape they, she had uh, a lot of customs from the army and <laughs> Okay, and then the back of the um, uh, the back of the structure uh, that was uh, your living quarters, your house, and talk about uh, uh, talk about what that looked like inside the, the house portion. How many rooms were in it? There, there were five rooms, and uh, they got changed over the time. The inside of it. <laughs> okay. And how many, uh, what were the rooms? Uh, how many bedrooms? There's two bedrooms, uh, two baths in the back, and uh, kitchen, and the back porch, and the living room. Okay. Um, on the side there where those two windows are, uh, what were those rooms? They were the two bedrooms. Okay, and the little, the little window in the back. That was, that's the bathroom now. <laughs> the bathroom now, but it wasn't before. It was a, a, a part of the bathroom. It didn't, it didn't have a window or nothing. <laughs> okay, and it was always up on on uh, uh, concrete blocks when yeah, it was so out there. And when was the uh, whole structure moved? It was moved in 1950. In 1950. Okay. So does it still sort of appear uh, as it did back then? What's the difference? The <laughs> difference is, uh, I guess the, uh, it got paneling on the outside. I mean the uh, uh, aluminum paneling. Okay. And uh, the front part of it's changed. Okay, and uh, 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 did it have originally what type of roof did it have on it? It had a um, tin roof, tin metal roof. Okay, and now it has shingles on top of it. But basically, it's it's uh, just about the same configuration, correct? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Um, when they moved this in 1950, how old were you? I was 11 years old. 11 years old. And you continued to live in the house uh, with your family uh, until uh, approximately how long? Uh, until I was 30, 30 years old. Okay. So that was in, uh, let's see. <laughs> if you were 1969. 1969. And then uh, you uh, got married and moved? Yes. Okay. Uh, did, did the family still remain in the house? Yes, they did. Okay, and um, until about what time period? Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, in the late 90s. The late 90s. And then the house was sold? Yes. Okay, and now it's used as a rental? Yeah, it, the house is sold after my mother died. Okay, okay. And, uh, but it still looks in great shape. Yeah. Okay. L uh, you want to go take a look inside? She, she invited us inside. Okay, let's go take a look. I don't know what... Okay. No, they didn't have any windows, just a door. They had a bathroom here and another bathroom there for the house. Okay. The other one's for the customers. All right. And that's where the door was. Yeah. And the back porch would have been out here. Well, that's, this is the back porch right here. Right here. Okay. Yeah, that is nice. Okay. And that's the back porch. Very nice. That is nice. A nice porch. Very nice. Here are the doors right here. Okay. This was uh, the store portion, and you can see where the wall was, and it went all the way across to this room here. And this was the this was the store. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And then was there a, 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 a door or something that went in here yeah. to the other yeah, room? Yeah, the door was over here and the wall went all the way across here. Okay. On this side. Okay, so yeah. approximately here was yeah, a door. Yeah, the counter right here for the store. And it went around it right here. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then we went through, and then this was the house portion, and you can see this was the living room from. I don't know. This looks like a little smaller than it was. Okay. And that was one of the bedrooms. This is the bedroom right here. Okay. Which has the was the ceiling always like that? No, they no had, they, that was a paper ceiling too. That was the paper ceiling. Okay. And it, the paper went down to here. Okay. And is this original to the house? This so uh, uh, this beam across here. Was this original? This was the living room. Yeah. They had a, a wall came over here, and they had another door to this next room. Uh, okay, so there was a wall. And this so is that's the living been, room right here. This is the little living room. Okay. And then... This is the kitchen here. That was the kitchen. They used to have an old gas stove right here. Okay. And uh, so that was the little kitchen. And then we went through, and... This here. This is the bedroom. That was another bedroom. Okay. That was a small bedroom in there. Okay. So you don't want the light on. No. The, <laughs> the, 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 I think that's where the, whatchamacallit is. Uh, it, the, our bathroom used to be right here. Okay. It used to be right here to here. Okay. And that was where the little bathroom was. Yeah. And then the, the other back bathroom was back there and that was the one that was used outside right okay and then was this part of the house also this it's is now the, the kitchen. kitchen it's now the kitchen it used to be the uh, porch this used to be the porch okay yeah, it, it came up to here then the, they had screened in all the way around okay so this used to be the porch and now it is a kitchen beautiful little kitchen and that goes out onto a porch. Very nice. Now this was, uh, was it in this configuration when you lived in it as it is now? Up until 1962. Uh, okay. And then, uh, and then it was changed? Yeah, they, they added this bath, changed, put the bathroom back here. And okay. Then, uh, the kitchen back here. Okay, and then uh, put a porch out there, and uh, that goes into to the other bathroom, which would have been the bathroom that the customers used yeah. originally with it outside. It was, narrow, it was narrower than that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little tiny one. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so that that takes part of the two bathrooms. That okay. There. Now you uh, and then uh, uh, your family continued to live in here until your mother passed away, and it was sold in when two thousand one. Two thousand. Um, she was eighty years old. Yeah, two thousand one. Two thousand and one. So your family owned it from nineteen forty two when they built it. Yeah. Uh, uh, to two thousand one. That's mm -hmm. quite a quite a span of time. And this was your home. Yeah. Very nice. But you said that these ceilings are not original. Did you put those in when you lived here? We put the, this ceiling in. Yeah. Okay. And that's tongue and groove. It looks like tongue and groove heart yeah. pine. pine yeah. yeah, heart pine. Yeah, wonderful little house. How many? No, they're all gone. Uh, uh, how about this boards that are up here? That's part of the paneling that you were discussing that was yeah. on here. It might have been. I don't know. Okay. It, it looks like been. it's original because it's the same type yeah, of tongue and groove. Yeah. yeah. That was the original. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So that that looks like that's the what the, what it was tongue and groove uh, heart pine paneling. It, it, we had it. It was uh, uh, lacquer 
lacquered. Varnish. Yeah, <laughs> varnish. varnish version. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what it looks like. And this right here used to be uh, where the ironing board went back in the... Oh, a built-in <laughs> ironing board. Okay. Uh, excellent. And now it, it, they uh, utilize the space uh, uh, for knickknacks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Very good use of space. Ironing board. Okay. You had to make all kinds of little concessions for uh, uh, space. Ah, here we go. Yeah, it's still got the panel back there. Uh, There's two panels. An electrical panel. Okay, I still have the electric panel. Okay, good. They just add the panel on the outside. Okay. Um, how many square footage do you think is in this house approximately total? I have no idea. I say it's I say it's uh, probably about 900 and something. Yeah, uh, that's what it appears to about that maybe 900 and something. Uh, well, yeah, uh, you've came and you've seen what it looks like so many years after this. Does it bring back a lot of memories? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, that window used to be. It'd be about that wide. That, that widen that window. Right there. That window there. Yeah. So they widened that window, and this was all the little store here, uh, which is uh, oh, I'd say it's uh, the whole house is approximately maybe uh, 10 foot wide if that 10 foot wide in the little store area by uh, that's almost square about 10 by 10 mm -hmm. and then it goes out into into the other section that and then the two bedrooms are out there very nice very nice uh, Charles uh, uh, tell me what this little structure is this is uh, Wait a minute. the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Uh, ben Lewis donated the property and uh, we had a. Okay, when was uh, uh, this church uh, uh, built, Charles? This built in the uh, 19. Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, it was built sometime in the 1970s, maybe? 60s, uh, probably. 60s, the 70s. Oh, in the 60s. Okay, and this replaced the um, the uh, original little Seventh Day Adventist Church that was moved from the Cape. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, uh, who owned most of this property? Uh, ben Lewis. Okay, and where was he from? Uh, he he lived up at the Cape on Pier Road, is next to the old wooden store. Okay. And uh, approximately in this location, uh, back in the woods back there, was where the, uh, they brought the other uh, old uh, Seventh-day Adventist church and placed it? Yes. Now, about what time was that? Was that in the 50s also? Yeah, 1950. Okay. And uh, that was used until you built this other church? That's right. Okay. And uh, what is this little shed over here that's located on the property? Um, ben Lewis, after he moved his house out to a, a location in front of the shed, um, he built the shed back here okay. for his work. Okay, and um, uh, what happened to his house? Uh, did it burn down or did they just take it down? Or? Uh, they, uh, after he moved over in, uh, to St. Pete, they, uh, they took the building down, okay. they tore it down. But the little shed, but he owned all this property. Yeah, all the way up to the A1A. Okay, and then uh, we're on, the, uh, by the way, uh, this property is located on the corner uh, uh, of uh, A1A and Church Street in the uh, city of Cape Canaveral. Uh, and then uh, when uh, they built this other church, uh, small church here, to replace the original Seventh-day Adventist, uh, then uh, then uh, who did they sell this to? They sold it to the, the Presbyterian Bible Presbyterian Church. Church, and then they built the large structure uh, over there and used this one as a chapel. Uh, what happened? Where is the um, uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, now? Where did you move to? Uh, to. Um 
of them, Cox Road and Coco. Okay, so and it's still operating. And the, and yes. uh, how many of the original members uh, still attend church there? From the Cape? Yeah. There's none of them left except no. me. <laughs> except you. So you yeah. still belong to the same church. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, who is the pastor that uh, pastored here at this church? Do you remember? We had several pastors. <laughs> okay. Uh, pastor Roy, Pastor... Uh, I, can't, I can't think of them all. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, pastor uh, Blaine. Okay. Did, <laughs> okay. Did the pastor that come came from uh, came from uh, Cape Canaveral uh, from Canaveral? Uh, did he also come over in '50 when you moved the church? Uh, we didn't have a regular pastor out there at the Cape. We had the elders that had the service okay. take turns for the service. Okay. And did most of those people come when you moved it in the '50s? The original ones, yes. Yes. Okay. And do you remember some of their names? Uh, there was uh, Judith Whidden, uh, and Lena Whidden. They lived at the old uh, wooden store. They bought it over here. Oh, they bought the wooden store over here also? <laughs> yeah. On the same property, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same property the church was. It's only a little north of there. Okay, and, and what happened to the store? Did that... Well, they, they, uh, he tore that down too. Okay. And who are some of the other people? The Widdens? Uh, uh, no, uh, Ivan Crowder um, and uh, <laughs> Mrs. Crowder. Okay. Ivan May, I think Ivan May was her name. Okay. And they bought property just across the other side of A1A over here on Washington. On Washington. Yeah, they had a big piece of property over there too. Okay, and yeah. did they move their house also? Yes, they did. Okay, to that piece of property. So actually quite a few people moved here to the city of, of uh, Cape Canaveral and moved their houses here. Yeah. Uh, are, uh, and uh, how many are, are in existence today? The houses? Yes, the houses. Uh, I think my, my grandmother's old store and uh, two Pretorius houses. Okay. And the rest of them are torn down. And all the rest of them are no longer here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, we're going uh, into where the old Seventh-day Adventist church was uh, located originally. I think it's right in this area somewhere, right in here. What a I remember some big oak trees near it. These are some big oak trees that are located here. It's probably on this side. So probably on this side, okay. An old wooden store was back in there, by the way, on the other side of the trees. Okay. So it's all grown up now. You'd yeah. never know anything was here. But what beautiful old oak trees. Gorgeous. Okay. Um, what are these houses from, uh, Charles? I think this house used to be on Pier Road, uh, belonged to the Torius. This uh, they, this belongs to their son now. Okay. Albert the Torius. And uh, these were moved also in the 1950s? They were moved in the 1950s, yeah. Okay, and uh, we're in uh, the city of Cape Canaveral, and uh, there's uh, another one down the road. Let's walk down there and see what that one looks like. Uh, this is the back of the structure, same structure, and um, there's a lot of pretty interesting detail on it. Um, there's an opening to the back uh, that uh, it appears that uh, it doesn't have a roof on that section. But, uh, it's a it's a lower roof. Mm -hmm. 
uh, not too far from that house uh, this is another house and um, uh, same style not quite as fancy T uh, tell me something about this house About this house, he, uh, Albert told me it belonged to his grandmother, and uh, it was located near the river, and it had, it had a royal palm beside it. I think they took that royal palm and put it in the middle of uh, the road where they're now at the Cape, and it, it died. <laughs> Uh, do, uh, uh, do you know anything about this fence that's in here? That looks like old uh, tabby type of uh, concrete block. Did that com possibly come from out there also? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, we'll have to ask Mr. Petorius. Uh, it's very interesting, actually. It's, uh, and it is tabby. Concrete block. Stuck on uh huh. All stucco, and okay. then it's stuccoed down the way there. Okay. And you see those holes up there? I think that's where the water comes off the roof. <laughs> uh, they're made as drain holes. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting that it comes off, and they're flat roofs in the inside. They're flat roofs. Yeah. Interesting. It's actually in pretty good shape. It looks like it has the original windows and screens. Uh, and the possibility is that these may be torn down. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, this is uh, the front porch. Uh, it's pretty well grown up so you can't see too much of the west side of the house. But there is an interesting uh, little bump out area here uh, that could possibly be part of uh, a dining room or what interesting